This video is brought to you by PPLIR Europe, a not-for-profit community of European general aviation pilots dedicated to helping ourselves and others to use our licenses to the full. We share our passion for flying through mutual exchange of expertise, experience, information, inspiration and education. We also assist regulators in framing legislation that affects all GA pilots. We're almost all volunteers and do it because we love it, though we do also need to raise a little money, mainly to fund our representation and lobby activities. Please join us, improve and broaden your own flying, enjoy belonging to a community of like-minded pilots and help us represent you. Hi, Windy.com is a free to use online forecasting website and app. There are inexpensive premium features, which I would recommend any serious pilot purchase. In the grand scheme of things, it costs almost nothing. I have no commercial relationship with Windy.com other than being a happy user. Windy.com has hundreds of features and capabilities that I don't need or use, which I won't be talking about today. This tutorial is very simply about how to use the very limited set of features that we European IFR pilots need, which essentially comes down to visibility, cloud base, rain, wind, and icing. If you also sail and want to know about swell and sea currents, or you're interested in pollution, fire risk, or any of the many other things that Windy has to offer, this video is not for you. I'll show you the same features on Windows and iOS. I'm afraid I don't have an Android device, but I'm going to guess that it's pretty similar. Okay, let us, as I've heard other video makers say, get into it. Windy provides a color-coded map of each of the measures you need to look at with a forecast ahead. You can choose between a number of computer models, that is to say the various organizations around the world that provide forecasts. The main two are GFS and ECMWF. You pick between them here on the web page and here on the iPad. However, two of the principal measures we care about, visibility and cloud base, are only available on ECMWF. But that doesn't mean we should ignore the other models, because VIS and cloud base will tend to follow general systems, highs, lows, and fronts. So it's useful to look at the different models calculations of where the air masses will be, which we can generally see in rain and wind, which are in all the models. And that will inform our opinion of the timing of the ECMWF forecast of cloud base and VIS. Before I show you some examples, let's look at how we can change the color coding for each parameter. This gives you a personalized representation of the weather. For example, I paint in red any marginal weather and in purple unflyable weather. I'm a professional pilot in current practice flying multi-engined aircraft, so my minimum flyable cloud base is 200 feet. But a recently qualified IFR pilot flying a poorly equipped single may consider anything less than 1,000 feet unacceptable. The experienced and proficient holder of a BIR IRR or IMC rating might say 500 feet, and so it goes on. On the website, you select the hamburger. I believe that in Safari on the Mac, you need to then select settings from menu, favorites and settings at the top of the screen, but not on Chrome in Windows, where the customized color scale dropdown is found at the bottom of the page. You can then select which layer you wish to change. Let's look at cloud base. I have set the bands at 0 to 200 feet, 200 to 500, 500 to 1000, and so on. You can change the bands to suit you. You can then choose the color for each band. When you've finished, save and move to the next you want to change. The iPad is pretty similar. Hamburger, settings, then it's just the same.
I believe that if you have a Mac, the settings are exchanged between iOS and Mac, but that doesn't seem to happen between iOS and Windows, even if you're logged in as a Premier member. While we're in settings, change the wind to knots, altitude and elevation to feet, distance to nautical miles, etc. You probably also want to set all times to UTC, though I'm not convinced that this works properly on the timeline anyway. Have a general hunt around for other settings that suit you, such as startup location and layer, whether you want wind as compass points or degrees, and so on. So let's now set up the layers we care about. On the website, click on more layers and slide across the sliders for wind, gusts, rain and thunder, thunderstorms, temperature, freezing altitude, fog, cloud tops, cloud base and visibility, and turn everything else off. You'll probably want to switch on airports, which is done slightly differently on web page and iPad. On the web page, click down here on more layers and decide what you want. On the iPad, it's down here below the menu. You're now pretty much set up, at least the way I like it. Once you've been using it for 10 minutes, you'll have your own preferences, but start with my recommendations and move forward from there. So let's start this baby up and see what she'll do. I always start with rain and thunder. It gives a pretty good indication of where's okay and where isn't. We can see for the whole of Europe or more locally where the rain is and by using this slider, where it's expected to be over the next while. So, this is ECMWF's opinion as we move forward. I guess it's a pity that I'm making this video during such a settled period, but you can imagine that often this depiction shows wave after wave of frontal rain. Now let's ask GFS's opinion. Or, probably more helpfully, let's pick a date and time and swap between models. You immediately see some quite different forecasts. That's when you might ask some other models to vote. But do be careful, different models go forward different times. If I select a date beyond the reach of a model, then move to that model, it simply pushes the time back and you may not notice. Now I'm going to introduce the weather picker. On the web page, you just left click to get it and right click for a context menu. On the iPad, a light click for the picker and a press and hold for the context menu. You can position the picker where you want it to get a point forecast for that spot. Once we have the picker, it gives a much more precise viz, wind, cloud base and freezing altitude than just the color code. For the wind, you get a slider to allow you to look at different altitudes. Notice that fog shows up on different models, but not ECMWF. If you mouse over an airport, you get its METAR and you can click to get other details, including the TAF.
There are also a few webcams for what they're worth. And the last feature I'm going to show you is the route planner. You can select points on the map to create a route. And you get a sort of grammet with a VFR planner focusing more on clouds and terrain and IFR more on freezing level and wind. Personally, I can take it or leave it, but I have at least shown it to you. So I do hope that gives you confidence to get past the rather daunting user interface and allows you to start using windy.com effectively. Once you've jumped that hurdle, you'll find your own tunes to play on it. See you in the next video.